Hey everyone, Mr. Piano Tech here, and today I'm going to show you how to fix sticky keys. So sticky keys are a very common problem that technicians have to repair on a regular basis. They can be caused from everything from debris in the piano, uh, moisture levels out of control, as well as uh, warped or broken parts. So I'm going to go through the process that I use to uh, diagnose and repair sticky keys in pianos. So let's head out into the shop and get started. Okay, so um, sticky keys is a very common problem to run into while working on pianos. Uh, I find most of mine tend to be humidity, moisture related here in Florida. Uh, we have a lot of excess moisture, always finds its ways into pianos. And um, <clears throat> some of the other more common things, um, debris, of course, inside the piano, in the action or in the keys. Uh, and then uh, this front rail, um, the warping of that front rail is a pretty common problem. Um, and sometimes uh, you'll see it warped pressing on the keys and sometimes it's when the person's playing it, they might push it forward just a little bit. Little kids are prone to doing this when they're playing because they keep their hands kind of flat and they'll push the key and push that rail. Um, so that's a very common problem. Um, other than that, you know, this, the, the, the front rail, um, sorry, the front pin here can be twisted a little bit, um, which will hang it up. You could uh, have, um, you may need to do some key easing because the wood on the bottom of the key around this um, balance rail pin um, can get a little snug, so we need to loosen that up a little bit. Uh, you can also have the key leads or key weights um, expand a little bit and push on the neighboring keys, which will, which will stick things. So what I do is I just, um, just go through you know, front to back and, and go up in the action and see where the problem's coming from. So what I typically will start with though is see what the customer's complaint is. You know, if they say, um, <clears throat> yeah, there's a few keys up there sticking a little bit, I'd first check for debris. That's, that's most common. People drop all kinds of things in pianos, from paper clips to pencils to sheet music, guitar picks, quarters. Um, you know, determine if it's a little piece of debris that you can you know, just reach in there and pull right out and, and it's done. That happens fairly often, especially in grands. People like to drop it behind the fall board and it slides in there and, and, and gets into the action. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, start with you know, if they have a problem or if it's a centralized you know, or a very um, specific area where the problem is coming from. Um, but what I'll, I'll usually check globally if they don't have a specific complaint. If they say, yes, yeah, some of the keys stick every now and then, um, I'll check it globally. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go through and play every note without pressing the sustain pedal first and then see if I notice anything. If I don't, then press the sustain pedal down, play each key six times. So what that does is in an upright action, the damper, um, the, the back of the damper with the, uh, the spring in it will actually help the key return to its proper position by pushing on a little spoon in the bottom of the whippin. So by pressing the sustain pedal, you can eliminate that um, as a contributing factor uh, to helping you know, keep you from finding out where the problem's coming from. So if you push down the sustain pedal, play the notes six times, if there's any sticking problems, you'll find out. Um, it, it's either going to be in the key or it's going to be in the whip and assembly here or the hammer. Um, I run into a lot of them that where the hammers are a little sticky. So you can also use a left pedal that will push the, um, the hammers forward like that. And um, when you release, they should all come right back. If they come back slow or don't come back at all, then you know that's where your problem is. So check globally first, um, unless there's, like I said, unless there's a specific area they're complaining about, which usually that's, a, it's debris or a, a broken part you know, warped part, something like that. Uh, but yeah, use a sustain pedal. <clears throat> Same thing on a grand. Um, when you lift the dampers up, it's not sitting on the back of the key, so it's not helping the key return. So lift the dampers up and then check everything. So um, <clears throat> if you haven't noticed anything or you maybe notice it's just a couple of them, um, you need to dig a little bit deeper if you notice that it's not debris. So first check this front rail. Uh, make sure it's not warped. It's pretty common that these get warped. And again, make sure that it's not doing it when you press on it. You know, if you play a note and you press on it, make sure it's not pinning that key down. That's a pretty common problem. 
So if this rail is an issue, um, you can easily just shim it. Um, just loosen up the front rail, either by uh, removing the, you know, loosening the screws underneath a little bit, or you may need to um, release some pressure on the cheek block so that you can get a little shim in there. I typically use the little cardboard punchings that are used for adjusting dip in the front. Two or three of those, slip them in there in between the rail and the cheek block, push them down in there where you can't see it, tighten it back up, and that's usually enough to fix the problem. Um, so moving on from there, determine if, you know, whether or not it's the key itself. So the way that uh, I do that uh, is take the whipping pressure off of it and, and move the key up and down. See if you feel anything um, or if it's hanging up a lot. If it's just real sluggish and stuck, um, then determine where the problem is coming from. So every now and then I'll run into them where those key weights are blown a little bit. Um, so you'll notice it immediately because it'll either say stuck or it'll kind of grind a little bit. Just pull the key out and see where the problem's coming from. See if it's um, you know one of those that have expanded just enough to rub on the neighboring key. And uh, also check this, this front pin, make sure it's not twisted. If it is, straighten it up, see if that fixes the problem. But if you can tell that's pretty sluggish, so you want to um, do what's called key easing. Um, so it's pretty simple. So I just need a couple tools to do it. Just pull the key out. Um, I'll show you these a little bit closer in, uh, in a little closer detail here in a minute. But so basically what you're going to do is you're going to take this tool and you're going to pass it past this top bushing. You want to get to the hole in the bottom. So you get to the hole in the bottom just like that, push it in there, twist it just a little bit with a little bit of pressure. It doesn't take much. And then get it back out of there carefully. And then go on the outside and do the same thing, a little bit of pressure. Um, and then put it back in, recheck the key. Um, see if that fixes the problem. Sometimes you need to also loosen this one in the front here a little bit too. That's what you use the pliers for. Um, they have a little you know, slotted, squared up edge here that you can actually fit in underneath the key. Put it in there, give it a little bit of pressure. Uh, the bigger plate goes on the outside of the key. Again, put it in there, just give it a little squeeze. Sometimes just putting the tool in there and taking it out is enough to, to free it up some. Uh, but do that and then uh, recheck it and see if, see if the problem's gone. If it is, that's great. Um, pretty common thing to have to do, key easing to loosen those keys up a little bit. If they swell just a little bit, uh, the key's not gonna play properly. So if you did determine that's not where the problem's coming from, the key's playing fine, hold the back of the key down, um, lift up on the whip end yourself and see if you can determine where the problem's coming from. You know, is the hammer coming back real slow? Uh, is the whip end feel sluggish? You know, does the uh, does the jack return slow if you trip it out by yourself? You know, does it come forward and then slowly move back? That's pretty common. Um, check that. Check the springs on the back of the the hammers. Uh, make sure that it's not popped out and just rubbing against it, which is causing the problem. So basically, just go through, you know, and check for anything that's out of order, anything that's out of alignment. Stuff can get twisted, broken. It can the jack can come loose. It could be leaning into the one next to it, hanging things up. Um, sometimes it's even this little bridle strap holder is, is bent over enough to snag the back check holder on the one next to it. That's, you know, so you're just going to have to go through and determine where the problem is coming from. But um, so, yeah, so if it's uh, moisture related, if you notice it's more on a global scale, put the humidity control in it, get that under control, let it stay in there for a couple weeks and do its job and then see what you have left. If it's the front rail, that'll be pretty obvious. Um, shim that up. Um, if it's the, the key itself, try some key easing and make sure there's no debris in there or even the, you know, the key weight hanging it up. And if it's up in the action, um, it's, you're probably going to have to repin a flange. So this, it's the same procedure whether you're repinning a whipping flange, a jack flange, or a hammer flange. Um, so if you determine that's where the problem is coming from, um, that's what you need to repin and I'll, I'll show you here and now um, how to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to uh, repin a flange. Uh, first, though, I did want to show you the other tools I was talking to you about. So these are easing pliers. Uh, the smaller side here goes into the bushing, and the, the wider guy here goes on the outside of the key, and you just squeeze it and uh, give you a little bit more room in there. And um, this is the other tool. You notice it's tapered, and it's, uh, it's flattened on the sides. That's just so they can get there between the, the bushings on the balance rail bushing, and I uh, get into the bottom of the key. Uh, this little tool just fits into a combination handle. Uh, that's what I prefer to use, so that way you can use this for a lot of different things. But so anyway, it's a little more close up of that. And uh, okay, so repinning a flange. So this is actually a, a grand um, hammer flange, but it doesn't matter. So every flange you encounter is going to be exactly the same. 
So in, in each piano. So whether it's the hammer flange, whether it's the jack flange or the whipping flange flanges, for the most part are always gonna be the same. You'll run into oddities every now and then, but for the most part, this is what you're gonna run into. This is the type of bushings and all that you're gonna see in a flange. So what it does is it actually, the pin in here is snug to this, this side here, and that it will actually rotate in that bushing. So this needs to be a little loose and this needs to be a little snug so that that's where it moves. So what we need to do first, uh, get the old pin out. So you're gonna need a file, side cutters, uh, pin vise, or uh, pin pliers, and uh, some center pins and some center pin uh, burnishers, reamers. Okay, so we'll use this uh, pin vise here. It's flat on one side and it has a, a pin on the other side. That's for pushing the old one out. So just line it up with the old pin and then just push it out like that. You'll see it's sticking up on the other side now. Now be very careful when doing that, that you don't push out the bushing. Uh, that can be a very aggravating repair sometimes, especially if you're out in the field. Uh, so just be real careful, make sure you're squared up on that, on that center pin before you push it out. So now that we've got it out, we need to determine what size pin we need. Um, so most of the pins that I encounter are between sizes 20 and 21 and a half, including half sizes. So 20, 20 and a half, 21, 21 and a half, most common sizes that I run into. Um, I do keep the other sizes as well in case I run into some oddities here and there. But so what I will typically do is I'll start with a size 20 and uh, we'll see if that, if that fits well. If it feels really snug, go down to the number below it. Even if you have to go far enough to where it's loose and then work your way back up until it's snug, you don't want it too snug because if it's too snug, as soon as you push that pin in there, you're gonna split this wood. So let's try a size 20, and that's definitely too loose. So we'll go up to a 20 and a half. And that's good. You want it, I mean, you should be able to do it with your fingers, but not super easily with your fingers. Um, it's usually a pretty good uh, judge of that. So we're gonna go with 20 and a half. Now what we need to do is we need to prepare this to take a size 20 and a half pin. So that's where your burnishers and reamers come in. Now they do make uh, a, a burnisher slash reamer that is one guy like this and it's tapered and it kind of covers all the sizes. I don't recommend those. Uh, it's very hard to get uh, good results consistently out of those unless you mark you know, where the different sizes are on the reamer itself. So what I do is I know we have size 20 and a half pin, so I'm gonna use, I personally do it this way. I, I wouldn't use a 20 and a half reamer. Uh, the bushing's a little spongy and um, it needs to be able to move pretty freely in there. I go up one size with my reamer. So I have a 20 and a half, so I'm gonna go up to a size 21 and a half. I'm gonna take this and just very carefully Push it through both of them. Don't apply too much pressure at once. You will pop those out. Um, that's, that's a problem that you don't want to have to deal with. So just be real easy. Give it good, good tension. You know, support everything really well while you're doing it. Pull it out. Then I flip it over and I just like to do the same thing again from the other side. Okay, nice and easy. Make sure it's turning in there. And then just pull it back out. You should be good. Okay, so now we're gonna uh, put these back together. So just line them up. Use your pin vise. It takes a little bit of practice lining those up right sometimes. Um, so you're just gonna go push that through. Now, if you start pushing and it's not going anywhere, you feel a lot of resistance, stop. You're probably not in the hole. You're probably off to the side. Don't keep going and you'll break things. Okay, so now that the, uh, it's sticking out through the other side, I'm gonna go and snip it off with the side cutters. And use the file and make it flush. You want it flush, you don't want it sticking out too far. If it's sticking out too far, it's gonna grab the neighbor next to it in the action, you don't want that. So just get it pretty flush. Okay, that's good, that's good movement. You don't want it real tight, you don't want it super loose, you don't want to be able to do too much of that, you know, side to side, if it's wobbly that way, it's, it's too loose, you need to put a tighter pin in there. If 
if this had a hammer on it, <clears throat> what I recommend, um, hold it up, let it go. You should get six swings in it, uh, six swings from it until it stops. That's, that's pretty perfect in my opinion. So again, lift it up, let it go. If it swings six times before it finally stops, uh, that one should be just right. Yeah, they may have to play around with it a little bit when it comes to the other flanges. But anyway, again, like I said, that's, that's pretty much the same process that you're gonna um, use for any flange that you encounter, because for the most part, flanges themselves, this part of the flange is gonna be the same. Okay, so that's how to do that repair. Like I said, it's gonna be the same process no matter which flange you ever you know, need to repin. Um, but again, that, that'll free up any, any issue in a flange, um, giving it you know, some fresh life and a fresh pin in there. And in a grand, I want to point out, in a grand piano, you know, you don't have this left pedal that's going to move, you know, the hammers forward. So what I do, pull the action out, lift up the hammers to like at least a 45 degree act, as you probably go higher than that, um, almost vertical, and let them go. Um, they should drop right back down. If you have some that are going slowly back down or some that just hold there, then that's where your problem is, and you're going to want to repin that hammer flange. Um, that's a very common issue, a very common area for there to be an issue in grand pianos is, um, is that hammer flange. Um, those stick a lot in my experience. And um, if you have to do key easing on a grand, you're going to have to pull the action apart. Slide the action out, um, unscrew the stack, that the, the, the assembly that holds you know, your, your whippings, your hammers, everything. Unscrew that, take that off, then you can get to it. Um, some Grain actions, um, sometimes you can get the key out without pulling the stack off, but usually you're gonna have to pull that stack off to get to it. So that's why I go back to my first thing where if, if, it's, if the problem is all over the place, try to fix it globally first. Put some humidity control in it and see if that fixes it. A lot of times it will, or it'll just it'll drastically reduce the amount of work that you have to do and it'll reduce the amount of time having to be spent on the repair and it reduces the cost for the customer. So, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Check front rail, check debris, check key mo movement, check action movement, check all the components, determine whether or not it's a global issue or a very specific issue um, to, to one specific area of the piano. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that's it. Hopefully this has been a useful guide for you to be able to diagnose and repair sticky keys in pianos. Thank you for watching. Any questions, comments, snide remarks, leave them below. And as always, stay tuned.